So why should companies embark on a values journey and uh, underpinning their vision with, with values? And I found that quite often when you talked in the executive team, and I experienced it in the bank when we started down this road, there was a lot of skepticism and even cynicism about it. And people said, yeah, yeah, well, you know, values, lots of organizations say they've got values and they, uh, Enron had integrity as one of their core values. So uh, it's sometimes quite difficult to get the process started. But once you start down the road and uh, give people some insights into the real power of, uh, of values within organizations and they start to understand that at the end of the day, values are the glue that uh, hold together or even create the corporate culture. And that corporate culture is probably one of the most uh, powerful differentiators, particularly if you're in an industry where, with very little product differentiation. And if you can create competitive advantage through your corporate culture, it is one of the most difficult things for your competitors to, to copy. And I think then just giving practical examples of how values assessments uh, can assist in driving and growing organizations. So, for instance, uh, organization structures, uh, there's a huge amount of debate about decentralized versus centralized. Uh, and certainly my experience uh, has been that where accountability came up as uh, number one personal value and a and top 10 value, uh, current value and number one desired value, when we looked at, organize, at the organization structure uh, and the organization structure was actually making it impossible for people to be accountable because there were so many matrix uh, structures within the organization that any time something went wrong, there were always fingers pointing in opposite directions saying, you know, it's them. And uh, we had a change in the case of, of, of our bank we had to change nearly 12,000 people's report lines when we really started digging into accountability. Uh, and in the beginning, when there was resistance to the, uh, uh, the changes, we said, but we've uh, listened to you. Uh, we've done the survey. This is the second year of the survey, and accountability is right up there. And if we're going to live the value of accountability, we must make sure that people can be accountable. And uh, that overcame most of the obstacles. Uh, lots of other examples. So uh, when uh, hierarchy uh, appeared as a top 10 value and hierarchy is a potentially limiting value, uh, we were able to then go into the bank and say again, well, we've listened to you. And I think a very important thing about um, building values and using the Barrett methodology is it allows you to listen to your, your people. And I think we very often don't listen enough and listening in a way that you get a statistically valid representation from across the organization of what the organization is thinking and feeling is very powerful. So once we saw hierarchy appearing in the top 10 as a potentially limiting value, we ran focus groups and it turned out that uh, it was the grade structure in the bank. Uh, the bank had nearly 20 different grades and everything you did depended on your grade, whether you got stock options or not, how long your leave was, uh, whether you allowed a car, whether you allowed a parking bay, everything hinged on your grade. And so people, well, there were two grade reviews every year, every six months grades were reviewed. And for a month, uh, either side of a grade review, uh, you know, nobody did anything except try and find ways to justify higher grades. So we ended up scrapping the whole grade system. Initially, there was huge shock in the organization. People said, well, how am I going to know where I am? how I'm doing, and we said, well, you'll see it in your pay packet, and you'll see whether you're getting a bigger, bigger job or not. And uh, extraordinarily, hierarchy disappeared out of the, uh, the values uh, in the very next survey 12 months later. So it's a tool for listening and for pointing you in the right direction, and then for guiding you as to what the things are that you should be prioritizing and focusing on.